The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Of all the sounds in the universe... Perhaps nothing stirs the imagination more deeply than the sounds of the sea. People who have never crossed an ocean can still be transported in a walk along the beach, skirting the lapping tides, or standing high on the rocks with the waves crashing below. There's an eerie quality about the sea, and it conjures strange visions in any mind that is ready to receive them. Our story concerns the spell cast by the sea. Where is your son, Mrs. Desmond? Well, he's in bed, and I hope fast asleep. You hear that? Yes. Foghorn is a lonely sound. It's a lonely sound for women like you and me. Stop trying to frighten me. There's still plenty of time. Time for what? To take your son away from here. Take him away and guard him with your life. Our mystery drama, What Happened to Mrs. Forbush, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elizabeth Pennell and stars Patricia Wheel and Gordon Gould. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This story takes place at Captain's Cove on the shores of New England. Bert and Marjorie Desmond are inspecting a picturesque old house on a bluff overlooking the sea. They're city people, and in the past they have spent their vacations at mountain resorts or in dry desert places considered beneficial for the health of their son. But this year it's different, and they're getting more intrigued by the minute as Mr. Smith, the rental agent, shows them around. The view and the window seat. I haven't seen one like this since my grandmother's house when I was a child. <laughs> I'm more interested in all these car pieces over here. What do you call this stuff? Uh, scrimshaw. Oh, yes. The thing sailors made when they had time on their hands. Mm, the old captain had quite a collection. Most of it's over to the museum. What can you tell me about this ship model? A schooner, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that'd be Captain Forbes' ship, Desdemona. Sank. With all hands aboard. Oh, Mr. Smith, is that an island I see way out there? Nope. That's Dead Man's Rock. Oh, what a gruesome name. Was it the scene of a shipwreck? I understand some fella got murdered on that rock. I don't rightly know the circumstances. Uh, but there is an island further on out, known as Hiram's Hideaway. It's said to be the place old Captain Forbush took himself off to when he wanted to get away from his wife. Good fishing. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but are you sure we really want to take this house? Let's see the rest of it. There's a fine old staircase. <laughs> Beautiful railing. I don't think it's been dusted in years. Well, this house has been closed up most of the time. That's why it's such a bargain. Is there anything wrong with it? Nope. Tight as a drum. And a real historic monument. Now, you take this room. Oh, it's wonderful. I've never slept in a four-poster bed. Oh, boy, it's a big one, too. And uh, this door leads to a veranda. Oh, my. This porch goes all the way around the house. It always does in a captain's place of residence. A trademark, you might say. Why, sure. This is what you call a widow's walk. Yeah. Uh, no doubt Miss Forbush did her share of pacing. When the captain was away. Well, no facing for me, thank you. My husband has a desk job. What do you think, Bert? About the house? I yes. In a strange way, I've fallen in love with it. But I'm wondering... Wonder no more. 
We're going right into that room I already call my study and sign a lease for the summer. Spirit. Glad you've come to life. You haven't said a word since we left the cove. I thought you were asleep. No. I've been thinking. And worrying. Worrying? About Robbie. Robbie? I can hardly wait to get his reaction when he sees where he's going to spend the summer. But maybe we've made a mistake. Oh, you're kidding. No. That long, deserted beach and those rocks, it's a dangerous place for a boy. He'll have a ball. But it, it, it's not like any place we've ever stayed before. Have you forgotten how much of Robbie's life he's had to spend in bed? No, I haven't forgotten. But that's all over. The doctor said so. He said it was time Robbie started doing the things boys his age like to do. Not dangerous things. Bert, we're going to spend three months by the ocean. You bet we are. And the sea air will be good for all of us. Only, Bert, Robbie's never learned to swim. Well, Robbie, what do you think of it? Oh, man, this house is twice as good as you thought it was. I didn't remember it was so musty. The place needs airing. I'm going to open some windows. Dad, who's the old guy in the picture? Why, uh, that must be Hiram Forbush, the sea captain who built this house. He sure has a lot of red whiskers. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> you know, they knew how to paint pictures back in those days. Watch this, Rob. Walk over here yeah. and see how his eyes follow you. Sort of as though he was looking at everything you did. It's spooky. You think he's a ghost? Oh, come on, son. You don't believe in ghosts, do you? No. Well, I'll let you in on a secret. I think your mother does. Mom believes in ghosts. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, Pop. <laughs> What's all this about ghosts? I'm teaching Rob to be the man of the house so he can look after you when I'm gone. Hey, I want to go to the beach. Well, you can if your father goes with you. Not right now. I have some things to do. I'd go, only it's time to think about getting dinner ready. I can go alone. Sure you can. Oh, no, Bert, not the first time. First time for everything. And speaking of first times, how about that? <laughs> it's so strange to hear a telephone in a house like this. Glad there have been some improvements since the captain's day. Guess I better find out who it is. Pop said I could go to the beach. Now, Robbie, I want you to be very, very careful. Follow that little path and watch your step climbing down the bluff. Mom, I'm not a baby. And don't stay away too long. Do you have your jacket? Oh, Mom. I'll be watching you from this window. Damn, damn, damn. Well, what's the matter? That phone call from the office. Wouldn't you know they're having a crisis and they want me back? Oh, no, Bert. We just got here. You're on your vacation. Won't be gone long. Just for the day to help get things straightened out. Oh, but it's a four-hour trip. I know. I'll have to start very early tomorrow morning. And I guess I'd better spend tomorrow night in the city. But you promised that first thing tomorrow you'd see about swimming lessons for Robbie. It was a part of our bargain. I know, honey, but it's just a matter of putting it off for a day. Oh, you've said that before. As soon as I get back... We'll go over to the beach club and make arrangements for swimming lessons. And we'll meet some people so that you'll know the neighbors. And Robbie will have someone to play with. Robbie, dear, what were you doing on those big rocks today? Just throwing stones in the water. Mom, I can make them skip real good. I thought I'd asked you not to climb on those rocks unless someone was with you. I only climbed a little way. Well, no more climbing, young man, until your father gets back. But he's been gone for three whole days. Well, he's coming tomorrow. And we're going to let him know how well we've been getting along. Go to sleep now. I'm going out on the porch to watch the moon come up. Mommy, you promised to open the window very wide so I can hear the sound of the water? Yes, dear. Oh, the weather's changing. I can scarcely see the beam of the lighthouse. It's getting all misty. And don't be frightened if you hear the foghorn. Uh, I like that song. Night. Good night, dear. Good evening. Is someone there? I always stroll the veranda on a foggy evening. Well, there is someone. Who are you? I am Lavinia Forbush, and I presume you are the lady who is staying in my house? 
Why, I guess it was your house. Only I'm staying here now. My name is Marjorie Desmond. Didn't they tell you, Mrs. Desmond, that I never left this house? It belongs to me. Belong to you, Mrs. Forbush. Now it belongs to a man who lives in Boston. Ah, he thinks he owns it. No one will ever take my place in this house. Come, let's walk this way. Ah, oh, the fog is creeping over dead man's rock. Just the way it was that night. Uh, no, I'm getting rather cold. I think I'll go inside. Poor soul, you need a fine shawl like mine to keep you warm. <laughs> it looks like a lovely old paisley. Won't you come inside where it's warm? We, we could have a cup of tea. No, indeed, Mrs. Desmond. I only set foot in my house when it becomes necessary to get something I want. I'll stay right here where I always stay, keeping my vigil. But the fog is closing in. <sighs> really, Mrs. Forbush, I must go in. Oh, how thoughtless of me. The damp night air must have chilled you to the bone. Here, let me put my shawl around your shoulders. <sighs> what about you? Oh, I no longer feel the cold as I once did. Why, it is grand to have a woman to talk to once more. Mrs. Desmond, my captain was a bold and adventurous man. He brought me precious gems from India, from Persia, and from China. Oh, dear Mrs. Desmond, you must not make my mistake. You must take your most cherished possessions and leave my house. Oh, but I have no jewels, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, dear lady, you have the greatest jewel of all, a son. How old is your boy, Mrs. Desmond? <laughs> Robbie's nine and a half. Just the age of my Jason, a most dangerous age. I, I know. I, I worry about him. And well, you might. What happened to me is history. And history has a way of repeating. Really, I, I, I don't think I want to... You will listen to me. Please. My Jason. Oh, he was a strapping lad who helped me with the chores around the house. And when Hiram's ship was in, the boy spent hours talking to the sailors, learning how to tie knots and carve those intricate things from bone and bits of wood. <laughs> My Robbie would like that. And then one day, when Jason was nine years old, his father came to me and said, I'm taking the boy on a journey. It is time he began to learn the ways of men. What? Bert said something like... Too soon, I said, too soon. But my Hiram was a very determined man. And when he made up his mind, there was no stopping him. It's only a short journey, he told me. We are taking the Desdemona to the Caribbees. And Jason will go with me. I watched through the spyglass until the ship was far enough at sea to hoist the big sail which caught the wind. You do know what happened, don't you, Mrs. Desmond? Don't tell me anymore. I must, if you would save your boy. Late that evening, the fog closed in the way it has now. And then... Then began the long days and the lonely nights. Where is your son, Mrs. Desmond? Why, he's in bed. And I hope fast asleep. You hear that? Yes. Foghorn is a lonely sound. It's a lonely sound for women like you and me. When we've lost... Stop trying to fight this There's me. There's still plenty of time. For what? To take your son away from here. Take him away and guard him with your life. Foghorn is a lonely sound, and a ghost-ridden house by the sea is an unsettling place for a woman who is worried about her son. Perhaps in the light of day, when her husband returns, Marjorie will be able to shake her fears. On the other hand, 
Suppose Mrs. Forbush is really trying to tell her something. We'll find out more shortly when I return with Act Two. Now back to Patricia Wheel and Gordon Gould in Whatever Happened to Mrs. Forbush on CBS Mystery Theater. If you're afraid of what the future has in store, perhaps you look to the past for guidance. But Marjorie Desmond has had a strange encounter with the past, which only bolsters the fears she already has for her son. Is it possible that a ghostly presence from a former time can prevent or promote an impending disaster? Marjorie's husband has returned from his business trip, and we'll soon find out how he feels about what's going on. Bert, it's so good to have you back. Way longer than I expected. I've only been gone a few days. Same old thing. You should be used to it by now. Mm, but this time it was different. I mean, this place... Well, now, tell me what you and Robbie have been up to. Bert, I want to show you something. Hey, where did you get that paisley shawl? I like it. So do I. It has such nice, mellow colors. Where did you find it? In the old captain's sea chest? No. It was given to me. Well, that's a nice gift. Who's been around while I was gone? You're not going to believe this. Well, let me guess. It was given to you, only it wasn't really a present. You had to pay some enormous sum for it, and now you're afraid to tell me how much it cost. No, Bert. And I know you won't believe me. I won't believe you if you say Captain Forbush came to the door and said, My dear Mrs. Desmond, please let me in. I've returned from a long and tiresome journey. And it would please me very much if you would cook up some bacon and eggs. Uh, no, Bert. It wasn't Captain Forbush. Well, I'm happy to hear that. It was Mrs. Forbush. What? You're going to laugh. I know you won't understand, and I didn't either, only... Only it happened. For heaven's sake, Marge, what happened? It was a foggy night. You sure? Spooks always come out on foggy nights. Now tell me, where did you really get that shawl? I got it from Mrs. Forbush. Let's not play games. I'm tired. She was there. She was where? On the widow's Oh, cut it out. I talked to her, and she told me what happened to her husband. Sure, sure. Mr. Smith told us that. The captain was lost at sea. But Jason... Who in heck is Jason? Their son. Oh, Marge, would you please talk sense? Now, where did you get that shawl? I told you from Mrs. Forbush last night when we had a long talk. Now, I've heard everything. Okay, it's a joke. And I do think it's pretty funny. We're living in a haunted house, so let's enjoy it. If you don't want to tell me where you found that thing, okay. I'll play your game. At least until tomorrow. Don't you want to hear what she had to say? I don't want to hear any more of this crazy story. Come to bed. And tomorrow we'll have a great big laugh over this whole thing. And maybe you'll remember where you really found that shawl. That was the best picnic we ever had. Can we do it again tomorrow? Well, not every day, Rob. Maybe tomorrow we'll go to the beach club. I thought I might do some fishing. Dad, can I go fishing with you? Maybe we'll all go. How about it, Mark? Uh-uh, count me out. You know how I feel. I know. You like to eat the poor little critters, but it's cruel to catch them on those nasty hooks. Well, it is. Robbie and I may just go off and forget to come Take home. Take your son away from here. Take him away and guard him with your life. Well, honey, what's the matter? You look as if you'd seen a... It's nothing, Bert, nothing. I, I just have to be alone for a minute. Hey, Dad, where are all these things over here on the shelf? That's called scrimshaw, Rob. Scrim? Mm -hmm. These are things that were made by sailors a long time ago. When they were on those sailing ships and the sea was calm, they didn't have much to do. So they carved pieces of bone or wood and painted shells. How bet I could do that? You'd have to learn how to use a knife. Would you teach me, Dad? It's a uh, bedtime, young man, up the stairs. Mm, if I was on a boat, I wouldn't be going up any old stairs. I suppose you'd be climbing the ropes. Or walking the gang. No, I asked that fisherman today where he slept, and he said down below. <laughs> Unless you want to sleep in the cellar, the direction is up. Get going. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> nice day today, Marge. And I don't know when I've seen Robbie so happy. Oh, he's certainly having a good time. 
And tomorrow when we go to the beach club, we can make arrangements to have him start taking swimming lessons. I'm not sure they have regular classes. Then we'll get him a private instructor. Marjorie, I am perfectly capable of teaching him myself. I won a medal in college, remember? Well, of course you're a good swimmer, Bert. And I thought... Oh, I suppose if Robbie had been well, you would have taught him long ago. But don't you think he'd learn more quickly now if an outside... Hey, there's nothing wrong with his old man, is there, Marge? I have to finish up the dishes. Let's talk about it when I'm through. boat with her sails. But I can play with the other things. You know, the bone from the shelf. I know. And I brought you one that was a favorite of my son. He was just about your age. Now, do you have a candle I can light? There is one over there in the bureau, but I could just turn on this light. No need to waste electricity. I never had it in this house. That doesn't look like a match to me. A tinderbox. Best thing in the world for striking a light. There. Now, Robbie, what do you think of this? Wow. What a big shell. This is for you, Robbie. To keep for Jason while he is away. Where's he gone? I'm hoping you will help me find him. Oh, I'll be glad to help you. Because if he was here, we could climb the rocks together and, and explore that pirate's cave. We'll look for him, Robbie. We'll look for him together. So now, if you will come with me. Oh, oh I, I couldn't go anywhere without asking permission. But this is my house, and I am giving you permission. I still couldn't go without asking. Quickly, boy. Come on. Put on your clothes. <gasps> Mom! Mom! Dad! Oh, what is it, Rob? Why, Robbie, what are you doing with a candle burning? You know how dangerous... I didn't light it, Mom. You tell them, Mrs. Wo- Where is she? Where's who? The, that lady, Mrs. Forbush. She was standing right there. Oh, good Lord, not in here. Rob, there's no one else in this room. You've been having a dream. No, dear. Honest, she was here. Look what she gave me. Not you, too. Say, that's a very interesting shell. So where did you find it? Dad, I didn't find it. Mrs. Forbush said it belonged to her son, and I could borrow it until he comes back. That's a likely story. You can make up a better one than that. But that's exactly what she said. I'm going to help her find him. And when he's here, we can play together down on the beach. No, Robbie, dear, that's not possible. You're both being impossible. But the trouble is, we have to find Jason. Oh, stop Robbie. it, Robbie. I won't hear any more about this, Jason. Rob, you've had a dream. It seems very real. But now it's over. And tomorrow you'll have forgotten all about it. But, Bert, what about the candle and the shell? Well, there must be some reasonable explanation. But let's not think about it now. I'm blowing the candle out, and Robbie's going to sleep. Good night, son. You've been playing a joke on me, and I'll admit it's been a good one. You were very clever to get Robbie to go along with you. And I must say, he played his part well. But I can think of better games for a boy his age. This was no game, Bert. You didn't coach him to put on that act? Of course I didn't. Well, 
If it was a nightmare and he dreamed all those things about Mrs. Forbush and her mythical son, it was only because you filled his imagination full of stories. I have never mentioned either Mrs. Forbush or Jason to Robbie. Then there's a book about them somewhere around the house. Well, if there is, I haven't seen it. Well, you must have had one of those imaginary conversations out loud, the way you do sometimes. And Robbie overheard you when you thought he was asleep. Oh, Bert, I don't do that anymore. And I don't see how he could possibly have been listening the night I talked to Mrs. Forbush. Marge, there is no Mrs. Forbush. How would you know? You weren't here. <sighs> Honey, we're taking this whole thing too seriously. Mrs. Forbush lived nearly 200 years ago. So she can't be hanging around here now. I suppose you're right. That's my girl. Give us a smile. Well, I, I'm, I'm trying. Now repeat after me. No more conversations with Mrs. Forbush. No more conversations with the Lavinia Forbush. <laughs> Where'd you get that cookie first name? Well, she told yeah, okay, me. Okay, okay. No more conversations with Lavinia Forbush. And what will we tell Robbie? <laughs> bought me. He's teaching me how to catch fish. <laughs> well, it looks as though you bought out the store. But did you get my groceries? Yep. Groceries are all right here. But hold off on the steak. We just may come back with something very special for the frying pan. Look, Mom. My very own rod. <laughs> did you ever see one of these? This is real. Yes, dear. It looks like a very nice reel. Where will you use it? Down at the wharf? Nope. We're going to get Rob off to a really good start. I've rented a boat. What kind of boat? Oh, just a putt-putt. You know, one of those flat bottom jobs with an outboard motor. But you you aren't going out to sea. Sure. Well, look at it, Marge. Smooth as glass. But only, what do you know about the, well, the tides and the currents? Marge, we aren't planning a trip to China. Where are you going? To that island. It's so clear today, you can see it from here. Don't you worry about a thing. See, I bought him a life jacket. And he's going to wear it every minute of the time. We promise, don't we, Rob? Sure, Pop. Promise me you won't go far? I told you. We're only going out to that island. When Mr. Smith said the fishing is good. What do you say the island's called? Hiram's Hideaway. Oh, yeah. Sorry I asked. Have a good time. If you stand on the porch with the binoculars, you can watch us most of the way. Well, Mrs. Desmond... I'm sorry you did not hear my warning. Oh, no, please, please don't come back. Well, I've not been away. But I don't want to talk to you. It was bad enough that you upset me, but you had no right to bother my son. It was you who interfered, Mrs. Desmond. You and your husband. You spoiled it all. I was trying to save your son before this happened. Nothing has happened, Mrs. Corbush, and I won't let you alarm me anymore. But you are alarmed, Mrs. Desmond, and well you might be. Why did you let him go? See, they're already out of sight. And if you don't act quickly, you'll never see either your husband or your son again. time, it seems more likely that the predictions of the ghostly Mrs. Forbush may come true. Marjorie is a worrier, but after all, Bert is not a seasoned sailor, and Robbie can't swim. No, they're not setting off for China, but they are tempting fate. And it's too late to turn back now. I'll return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. a calm and beautiful day at Captain's Cove, and it looks as though the fears of Marjorie Desmond were totally unfounded. Father and son have explored the island. A whole new world is opened up for a boy who has been housebound much of his life, and Bert is savoring the joys of feeling a new closeness to his son. It is late afternoon, and they are heading back reluctantly to the mainland. Every day, I'm going to catch a bigger one next time. For a first try, you did very well. 
Maybe we can go deep sea fishing someday. Maybe tomorrow. Could we? Hey, we're doing all right with these smaller fellows. Flounder's good eating. You'll see. That mom will be surprised. We caught one, two, three, four. Hey, Dad, remember what you promised about that rock? Oh, it's late, Rob. I think we better not. But you promised, Dad. Honest, it'll only take a minute. Well, I'm not sure I can get right up to the rock. The water's starting to get a bit choppy. Where was it you saw that piece of driftwood you wanted? Uh, up there. See? Looks just like a couple of deer's horns. Otherwise known as antlers. Only I'm going to turn it into whatever whatever that other word is. Brim, you know. Hey, stop the boat, Dad. It's right up there. I can't just stop the boat, Rob. There's no place to anchor. I could almost reach it if I stood on the sea. Get down, young man. Uh, oh. Now, what did I tell you? There's a tricky tide around here. You'll come back some other time. Well, but, Dad, that piece of wood will be gone. Sometimes the waves go all over those rocks. I'll we'll never find a piece like that one. Oh. I'll, I'll try again. It's calmer over on this side. Slow down some more, Dad. But there's no way to come in. Like that flat place on the rock. You slow way down it, and then I'll jump off and get it. Is your life jacket on tight? Uh, sure, Dad. Okay, then. Be very, very careful. I'll idle the motor while you jump off. Grab your piece of driftwood and jump right back. Here I go! Uh-oh. The motor's died. And the boat's drifting. You stay right there, Rob, while I get it started. Yes. Yes. I want to speak to someone at the boathouse down by the pier. Uh, the place where you rent boats to go fishing? H Hello? Hello, this is Mrs. Desmond. My husband and son, are they there? Uh, uh, no. No, they rented a boat from you this morning to go to the island. Well, I expected them back long before this, and I was afraid something might have happened. Well, I, I know it isn't late, but... It is beginning to look stormy, and I can't see the island anymore. Uh, could you send someone out to look for them? The Coast Guard Patrol? How do I reach them? Uh, no, 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 thank you. I'll go to their station down on the beach. No use going to the Coast Guard station, Mrs. Desmond. They've taken the cutter and gone in the other direction. <laughs> Bert and Rob, I'm afraid they're in trouble. They are in trouble, Mrs. Desmond. Out by Dead Man's Rock. And we must send someone after them. No one to send, unless we do it ourselves. How, how can we? I've done it before. And if the two of us pull together... What are you talking about? Oh, boat over there. Can you handle an oar? Well, once I knew how to row. I'm not sure oh, that I... Hurry, Mrs. Desmond. Before the storm sets in, I'm aboard. Oh, on an old, old boat why it's half full of water. No time to be choosy. You fit this oar in the lock while I shove off with the other one. There's a hole in the bottom of this boat, Mrs. Corbush. This is madness. We'll never make it. Oh, Mrs. Desmond. Oh. See, it's getting rough. Aye. A storm is brewing. We, we, we must turn back. Too late, Mrs. Desmond. Too late. We must fulfill our mission. That rock seems further and further away. Oh, Mrs. Desmond. Mrs. Forbush, we, we're going to stay Lay away from that warning bell. The boat is sinking, Mrs. Forbush. It's going straight to the bottom. We'll have to swim for it. Swim for the boy. Save yourself, Mrs. Desmond. I don't know how. I've got a hold of it. Mrs. Forbush. Mrs. Forbush. Help. Until I can get closer. I can't seem to get this darn motor started. Hello? 
Oh. Who? Who are you? Hiram Forbush. At your service. Ca- Captain Forbush? Hey, uh, yeah. Are you in difficulty? You can't seem to get the stupid motor started. Give me wind and sails any time. But they're not going to help me now. My son and I... Is your boy over yonder? Yes. I should never have let him off on the rock. Dead man's rock's a dangerous place to be. But one of my men will get him. I'll be very grateful for anything you can do. We have to get home. <sighs> Couldn't you put us ashore in a, 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 a rowboat? Can't spare the men to take down a longboat. And my only rowboat was most rotted away. So I left it back on the beach. Oh, there must be some way. I'll pay you very well. All the money I want is out where we're going. And we can't stay around here any longer. So climb aboard, and No, uh, no I, I'll take my boy back in this boat, and someone else will come along, or uh, they'll send the Coast Guard to look for us. You won't last long in that thing. There's a storm coming up. Uh, then, then please, send up some kind of a signal, a, a flare, a, a rocket, or... off a cannon and rouse the whole town. No need for that. We're not in any trouble. But we are. My son and I... <laughs> You know how it is. I believe you have a son. I always wanted a son. Fine boy, this one. Just the right age for a first trip before the mast. Well, I'm giving you your last chance. Captain Forbush, let's be sensible. I have obligations to meet. Sounds to me as though you have a guilty conscience. Lively with the sheets, man. She's coming about. Up with the sails and dead ahead. Side, Rob, and and jump! Daddy, I'm scared. Jump, Rob! Jump! Oh. That's it, Rob. Hey, dog paddle. The jacket will hold you up. Here, here, son. Grab my fishing pole. I got it. Good boy. Hang on. That's it. Now, get hold of the side of the boat. Yeah. Oh, Dad, I lost my stick. Oh, forget it. Easy now. I got you. Are you all right? I'm okay, Dad. Boy, boy. Can you see what I was doing? I was swimming. Well, not quite. Here, Rob. Here's some of these rags to dry off. I'm going to try this, this motor one more time. be all right. Hey, Dad. Think sometime we could get a sailboat? <laughs> I'd rather not think about this just now, Robbie. We've had a close call. Well, then maybe we could sail off. Robbie, no more. We're lucky. Dad, Dad, I hear someone calling. Well, that's not that our imagination. Uh, uh, over there, Dad. By that thing down up in the water. Someone clinging to the buoy. Marge, are you warm enough? Mm. Never felt better. Now, Marge, if you feel up to it, will you please tell us what in the name of heaven you were trying to do? Uh, we. That is, I started out in a rowboat. That rickety old rowboat that was down on the beach? Oh, yes. Did you know it was there? I hadn't seen it before. That boat must have been 100 years old. Why did you... I can't explain what was going on in my mind. Or at least you wouldn't understand. You see, I had this awful premonition that something terrible was going to happen to both of you and that I must row out as far as that rock to save you. Well, the boat sank and mercifully there was that buoy and then you came along. Please don't ask me any more questions, because now that you're both safe, all those crazy notions I had are gone forever. But something did happen, didn't it, Bert? Something happened all right. We were starting back when the motor conked out. And, and you, you won't believe this, Marge, but 
suddenly everything was deathly still. And out of nowhere came this big old ship. Like the one in the model over there. That's right, isn't it, Rob? Oh, Dad. And over the rail leaned that face with the cold blue eyes and the bristling red beard. None other than Captain Hiram Forbush. Oh, you're being mean, Bert, but I guess I deserve this. Go on. You don't believe me, do you, Marge? (laughs) But I tell you, there he was, big as life. I begged him to take us back to shore, but he said he was heading for the Caribbees. He had Robbie up on the deck while I was trying to start the motor. And then... And then that sailing ship started to take off. And I looked up, and that's when I yelled to Bobby to jump. Hey, Dad, that's the best story I ever heard. Now can I tell Mom what really happened? What really happened? You see, Mom, it was like this. I saw this piece of wood like like antlers on that big rock. And I wanted to make something out of it. You know, some of that scrim stuff. And I begged Dad to let me get it. So he slowed down the boat and I jumped off. Oh, that was dangerous, Rob. Well, it would have been all right, except the motor conked out and the boat was drifting away. So I had to jump in the water or I'd still be on that rock. And, oh, Mom, I was scared. But, but I almost swam. <laughs> A swimming lesson for you tomorrow, Robbie. I promise. Mom, hmm? can you tell me something, please? Yes, dear. What happened to Mrs. Forbush? Bobby, why do you ask a question like that? I've been worried about her. She... She drowned, didn't she? Yes, Robbie. She drowned. But that was a long, long time ago. What happened to Mrs. Forbush was not as important as what happened to the Desmonds. A possessive mother learned she must loosen the bonds with which she held her only child or live in an ever-present nightmare of fear. And a self-centered father discovered that if he neglected his wife and son, he ran the risk of losing them. Such lessons are learned and sometimes forgotten in strange and frightening ways. I'll be back shortly. of Mrs. Forbush has been laid to rest. But the captain, since no trace of his ship was ever found, you may see the Desdemona sometime off in the mists on a foggy day. The sights and sounds of the restless ocean stir something deep within the soul. There are countless tales to be told of the sea. We'll look for some to bring them along with other probings into those things which touch the dark and mysterious recesses of the human mind. Our cast included Patricia Wheel, Gordon Gould, Billy Lou Watt, Mary Jane Higby, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. There's a test, Benny. A test that can determine whether or not there was ever blood in that knife of yours. Ever. Understand? Yeah. So what? Well, I intend to make that test in court tomorrow. If it's negative, the jury will know that you didn't kill Kenneth Archer. Oh, I don't understand that kind of stuff. I'm not asking you to understand. If you stab that man, a jug full of chemical is going to turn pink. And you can kiss your freedom goodbye. But there's something else. If you ever cut anybody with that knife, even yourself, that chemical will turn pink. So, I want you to tell me now, was there ever blood on that knife? No, it was brand new. I never cut nothing with it. I'm telling you the truth. All right, Benny. We'll see how true it is. We'll give that knife a bath tomorrow. And God help us both if you lied to me. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact. The 12 hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. news is next.
next on WBBM Chicago.